Hey Bulldogs, Chris Bryant here again. Got a fantastic quick quiz and a lab review here for both you CCNA Bulldogs as well as those of you going after your NP route and t-shoot exam. So a little something for everybody here today. I'm going to show you a command that's already on the router in a moment. I'm going to ask uh, four or five questions about this one command, so we better know all the details about it. And also, even if you think you know all the answers to these, be sure to stick around because I'm going to give you a quick URL that will show you exactly where you can watch a 20-minute lab on this very important exam topic. It's absolutely free. So let's go ahead and bring up that live router. Here's the command. IP route 1110, 255-255-255-0, 172.12, 123.1, 119.00. First off, I need to know exactly what every numeric value in this command is. And by exact, I mean don't say that 172.12.123.1 is an IP address. We both know that, okay? Uh, we need a little more detail than that. Also, uh, what exactly am I creating with this command? And again, the keyword there is exactly. So if you want a moment to think about your answer, go right ahead. Uh, and pause the video because we're going to head straight into the answers from here. Now with the IP route command, we're always creating a static route. It may be a special kind of static route, which this one just might be, uh, but we're always going to start with IP route. The first number we see after that is the destination network or destination host address. We could have a static route pointing to one particular host, but that's what we've got there. It's a destination prefix. And these kinds of questions are particularly tricky to me when you're looking at a multiple choice exam question, whether it's practice exam, job interview, real CCNA or CCMP exam, because you're just looking at this list of commands and they all look the same. You know, they could give you an IP route command eight different ways and just mix the numbers up. So we know, need to know exactly what's going on with each one of these numbers. And that's why here you're going to have a prefix mask or a subnet mask. You are never going to put a wildcard mask here. So we're putting our 255.255.255.0 there. What is that IP address? It is the next hop IP address. This is the one detail a lot of newcomers miss, so I want to make sure that you do not miss it. If you put an interface type here, and in this case that could be an Ethernet or it could be serial, if you put that, what you're doing is configuring the local router exit interface. It has nothing to do with the downstream router. But if you put an IP address here, it is the IP address of the next hop. It is not going to be the, the an IP address found on your local router. So again, if you see an interface type, it's the local interface. If you see an IP address, that's the IP address of a downstream router, your next hop IP address. So we will just go ahead and put 172.12.23.1 there. And then finally, this odd little number at the end. We had a 119 there, and iOS help shows us that it's the distance metric for this route. That sounds kind of a clumsy way to put a distance metric. What it actually is, is the administrative distance that you are assigning to this route. And why in the world would you ever want to change an administrative distance? Well, I'm going to tell you how to find out in just a second. But here we had 119, and again, that's going to be your admin distance for this route. Because what you're doing in this case is creating a floating static route. And the first time I heard that term, you know, it did really throw me. I was like, floating static route? Floating, uh, as I put here on my website, floating on what? Uh, well, you can find out exactly what it's floating on and why we would use this in a free lab. I've got these videos on YouTube as well. Uh, if you want to look them up there, you know, do a quick search on floating static routes, Bryant or something like that. But here I've got all three parts of it because at the time, YouTube had a 10 minute time limit. So I'll probably redo these eventually and put them all in one video. But for right now, they're broken up into three parts. It's a fantastic floating static route lab uh, for both you NA and NP candidates. I know it's a long URL, so I will put in the YouTube description box a bit.ly link and send that out to you as well. While you're at it, and when you're done there, check out all my courses on Udemy, and thank you so much for making my CCNA course one of their best-selling technology courses of 2012. I don't know if their best of 2012 coupon code is still valid, but let me show you what is. I meant to log out of that first. Sorry about that. So let me show you. See, I never like to erase a mistake. I like to show them. There we go. So if we did that... Da, da, da. We go in like that. This is what you'll see 
when you go in that way and always make sure to click redeem it because the 125 price is really good but if you put bulldog 60 in right there you're getting in for $44 you're getting my CCNA world-class teaching and a fantastic education for about two dollars an hour almost 2500 people are already in there and i hope you'll choose to join us make sure to check out those free floating static route videos as well and as always i'm chris bryant thanks for making tba part of your ccna and ccnp success story we'll see you on the next video